Morning everybody. Yesterday we looked at using the chain rule to do some differentiation. Um, the chain rule is to do with uh, composite functions, it's to do with functions and functions. Um, and we used it uh, really well yesterday to get, to get um, some answers to some questions in a more efficient manner. So the chain rule is definitely about functions of functions. Today we're going to look at the product rule which is a product of functions. So, um, <clears throat> without without uh, labouring the point very much at all, if I just wanted to say let's differentiate something like y equals x squared root 1 plus x, that would be really quite tricky to do. I could have made this simpler by saying it's x squared and this is 1 plus I don't know, x all cubed in a bracket. Now that's something you would have been able to do, you could have expanded it all out. I'll just write this over here, what I just said. So I could have asked you something like this. 1 plus x cubed. Um, you could do this, you could expand it all out um, and then differentiate term by term. That would be really quite inefficient. <clears throat> the product rule which we're going to use today uh, is going to make that process a lot more efficient. But also it's going to let us deal with situations like this where it's difficult to multiply it out at all. So, similar to yesterday, we've got uh, some a formula to write down. So if I've got uh, y is equal to two functions that are multiplied together, so let's say some function u, <coughs> excuse me, u of x times some function v in x, doesn't have to be in x I could have different variables, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, let's assume they're functions of x. If that's true, then dy of dx is whatever u is, dv dx. I'll just drop the uh, x in the bracket because otherwise it's going to get a bit messy. Times v du dx. So basically what we need to do is, if we're given a function like this, we need to identify which one, which bit is going to be u, which bit is going to be v. It's quite normal not to write these bits of x, so I've just written them here just to really say to you this isn't some variable or something, these are functions. Um, and then once you've identified which bit you want to be u, which bit you want to be v, differentiate them and then plug them into this formula. So for this here, y equals x squared, 1 plus x all square rooted. I'm going to let u be the x squared. Remember, this is about a product of functions. I've got x squared times the square root of 1 plus x. So I'm going to let u be x squared, and I'm going to let v be the square root of 1 plus x. And then I'm going to differentiate them. du dx is 2x. I'm differentiating u with respect to x and I'm going to differentiate v with respect to x as well and this is where yesterday's work comes into play uh, the square root no, 1 plus x all square rooted is the same as 1 plus x to the half and so that's the same as half 1 plus x to the minus half I then need to differentiate what's inside and times it by it. Now, if I differentiate inside, I just get 1. So I've used the chain rule on this uh, to find out what the differential is. Obviously, if this was 1 plus 2x inside, then I'd have to times 3 by 2 afterwards because that would be the differential of what was inside the bracket. So now I've decided what u, v is, I've differentiated them both. I can now say, okay, well, dy dx is <coughs> u dv dx times v du dx. Use x squared times a half, 1 plus x to the minus a half times, oops, 30. That's, that's all wrong. What am I doing? That should be a plus, and that should be a plus. 
that doesn't seem very right. Okay, that's better. <clears throat> so just make sure we go through and change it. Yes, it's a product of functions, but you add these two things together. Add those two things together. So I'm adding these together as well. So I've got x squared times this one plus this times that one. And, and so all together that gives me x squared over 2 1 plus x plus 2x 1 plus x all square rooted. Okay, so what you could do from here is you could simplify this slightly if you were so inclined. Um, the chances are uh, when I say simplify, I mean I could write this as uh, I could change the denominator here to 2 square root 1 plus x, obviously times the top by the same thing just to make it one fraction. Um, however, when you're doing this sort of thing, you're rarely going to come across a question which just says differentiate this thing using the product rule, and that being all you need to do, it's going to be trying to find the gradient of something, most probably, and it will say find the gradient of this at a certain point and you'll look at it and say oh it's a product of functions so I need to use the product rule um, and obviously if you're trying to find the gradient of something you then substitute a value of x in so whether this is hugely simplified or not doesn't really make an awful lot of difference um, so don't worry too much about simplifying things even though I think in the exercise today it has got lots of simplifications um, don't worry too much about that as long as you can get yourself past this stage so at least these two products are slightly tidy that's more than sufficient um, so I'm not going to do any more than that for now because you don't need to know anything else about the product rule I just want you guys to practice that quite a lot tomorrow we're going to look at the quotient rule and on Thursday we're just going to look at some stuff to do with points and inflection um, okay, so I'll leave that where it is. Um, I'll upload the questions as well. Oh, I don't said which questions to do. One second. Okay, so if you can do question one, two, and seven from exercise level one, and question three and seven from exercises level two. I've just realised why I've been writing it like that. It's because I started writing computer games. I'm such a sadder. Okay, um, I will speak to you guys again tomorrow. I hope you have a good day. Um, bye bye.